Hi everybody, this is Galatians 4 Part 2, Rough Cut Overview. I wanted to get into the text itself uh, a little bit more in depth. Uh, just right off the bat, let's go with verses 1 through 7. Paul's talking about the time of adoption of sons. How the son always owned the entire state of the father, but he wasn't uh, given access until the date the father had uh, established. And at that point, he was declared to be a son and an heir. Um, when we talk about adoption, uh, there's a the Western view, and then there's it's a little different over in the Eastern view. The Eastern view, it's not it's not legal adoption. It's um, it goes beyond that. It it includes adoption into someone's lifestyle. So, essentially, adoption in in this Eastern book that we have called the Bible is about being adopted into the father's lifestyle. Uh, your days of trying to earn from God should absolutely be over. He's made this point in the last three chapters, and it, it's echoed again where he's saying, look here, you've, you've received everything as a gift. And there's nothing to add to a gift. It is complete. It is, it is, you cannot earn a gift. There is no way you can earn even one thing from God. One, you don't have the ability. And two, he's not about earning. He doesn't keep ledgers. Uh, verses 8 and 9, he reiterates, don't turn back to any kind of works. When you go back to works, you're going backwards. You're acting as though the cross wasn't even accomplished, that, that nothing was accomplished there. And you got to do something to, to hold up your view of Christianity or your, your form of uh, religion. you gotta, you got to add your works to it. And any such kind of works, whether they come out of the pagan world or of the Old Testament, they're null. They're void. They're concluded and brought to nothing in the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ, where we all died and we were all raised from the dead. Verses 13 through 15, Paul describes the agape flow. He said, when I came to you, you know, I was, I was suffering in my body, but you didn't turn me away. You embraced me and you ministered love of God to me. But he points out in verse 16 that the law that you fell under has cut off the love of God. The, the agape flow you were operating in, it's not there because you've been influenced by these legalizers, these Judaizers that come in and had uh, had, his, had their way with your, um, your faith, essentially. He says, have I become your enemy by telling the truth to you and dealing sincerely with you, verse 16. He points out the law-minded religious people trying to court you into doing their favor or get you into their circle are only doing so so that you can work to earn their favor and they can use you as a puppet. That's verses 17 through 18. And then he gets, uh, some commentators refer to this as a rather intimate statement, but he says, my little children, technon, uh, 5043 Strong's Greek, trained, willing child, you're willing, you, you all are willing children, he's saying, which indicates you've been trained. Willful obedience indicates being trained. It says, my little children whom I am suffering birth pangs until Christ is formed. And the word form there uh, in the Greek is to form to embodying inner essence. In other words, everything you need is already in there. Christ is in there. I'm bringing him out. I'm working to bring him out to where he is visible. That, that's why I'm writing this letter. That's, that's why I'm talking to you this way. I'm forming the externals, helping you form by the Holy Spirit, forming the externals uh, for you so that Christ is visible. Verses 21 through 30 uh, touch on the earthly versus heavenly Jerusalem. Everything we do of earthly nature it revolves around our efforts, our pressure, our force on other things. Uh, Abraham and Isaac, uh, you got Abraham, or Abram and Sarai. Uh, Sarai gets impatient and she says, you know, I've got this Egyptian slave over here. Maybe what it is, is uh, Abram, is you're supposed to have a child through her and then that'll be the promised child. Maybe that's what God was talking about. He's talking about our efforts. We're just not putting enough effort into this thing. Let's push. Let, let, let's put the effort into it. And they have Ishmael. And we know how that ended up. But that did nothing to hinder the promised son, Isaac, from coming on the scene. Other than God waited, uh, I believe it was uh, 
I don't, I don't have the times, but uh, God uh, changed their names, and, uh, and here comes the Son of Promise without any of their effort. They had nothing to contribute there, um, and God produced Isaac purely by his own might and power and, and nothing by uh, Abram's and Sarai's or Abraham and Sarah's efforts. They had nothing to do with it. Uh, and then verse 31, uh, the word technon comes up again. So we're not of the, the earthly Jerusalem, which is in slavery and, and pressure and, and is in, uh, in agreement with uh, uh, the efforts of this world. Uh, we are the woman of faith, uh, Sarah, who uh, gave birth to Isaac, and uh, not Hagar that gave birth to Ishmael. All of our efforts all of our struggles, all of our frustrations, they're all in agreement with Ishmael, not Isaac, the son of promise. They're, they're sons of efforts. So when we, when we attempt to make things happen on our own, we're not trusting God, not trusting his efforts and his abilities, whether that's you know something at, at work and physical employment, or you know we're trying to get something fixed in our lives, or, or actual day-to-day -day efforts to live more like Jesus, those can all go south if the root of the thing is that we're going to do this by our efforts. The whole thing of the cross is not live up to this standard. The whole thing of the cross is you have already been made complete. If you allow yourself to live naturally, you will live naturally supernatural. Only thing is you have to be trained in recognizing that you no longer are tied to the identity of the earthly Adam. You're tied to the, the uh, son, son of man from heaven. And that is your root identity. When we get our identity straight and we understand that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit live in agape circle and they have put us in the middle of their circle. When we live out of that position and out of that identity and we understand who Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are, and that there's no condemnation, there's no accusation in that circle, and they don't do abandonment. When we get a hold of that, and we realize and recognize that we are in Christ Jesus. We will reflect them everywhere we go, and everything we set our hands to, we'll truly be blessed, and people will see Christ in us. Thank you.